Guys, I'm ready to have a bit of fun today. Are you guys ready to have some fun? Because I am here in Buffalo, New York, and I'm at HDM Hydraulics. Kind of excited to be here. Kind of warm, actually, because I think of Buffalo as being, well, hot wings and snow and the bills. But there's more to it than that because we got HDM here. We got Nate here. Nate is going to give us a tour of this incredible factory. Nate's been here 20 years. I'm going to start with how many square feet are we about to walk around? Uh, well over 100,000 square feet. Well over a So if I disappear like magic from one area to another, it's because I ran out of breath. I'm getting older now. All right, Nate, let's get this tour started. What section are we in now? So we're in our long, but we call it the B&O area. We've got lathes with 26-foot bar feeders to where we can bring all of our machinery in, all of our material in, from the mill and we don't have to process it prior to going to our machining. So we can machine these parts right off of the raw material coming from the mill. Huge time savings. Let's talk about that time savings, but let's do it as we walk as well because we do have a lot of tour lot of ahead of us, to right? And so when we talk about the time savings, let's just simplify it. For you, you've been doing this 20 years. This is something you've known for a long time. And for you, it's common sense to say, by doing this, we've saved time. I see bar, I mean, I, just, I don't even know how many pieces of bar I see, if I'm gonna be honest. I see a lot of bar. What's the time, what, where does that time savings come from? It comes from not having secondary operations. It's important to one and done, right? That's our big thing here at HDM. Um, you know, the, the Toyota philosophy is huge. You know, Muda, waste. Don't create waste in your processes. Creating waste is secondary operations. So it's very important for us to try to get it done in the machine at one time. So in the essence of not creating waste, let's continue walking and look okay. at this tour. Yes, we want to make sure the audience sees everything. So we everything. have seven of these pieces of equipment from one side to the other. We partner them with secondary machines to allow our operators to run two machines because when it's you know, a six minute cycle time on one machine and a six minute cycle time on another, it allows them to keep that rolling. I like when I see people running multiple machines. I gotta be honest, Nate, I really do. And, and I used to enjoy educating people on being able to run different machines instead of being on a machine all the time. It's more become necessary these days to do that because of that buzzword of labor shortage as well. But you guys are clever here. We're about to show a ton of automation, but you've also cross-trained all your folks to be able to do that, right? Yes. It's important that you give them a sense, because everybody hears robotic, right? Oh, my job's gone, right? No, robotics is about giving your operators, your core operators that you want to invest in, a sense of security, right? There's nothing more stable than having stable processes. And stable processes come from intelligent operators being able to operate automation. Yeah, I definitely can't say it better than that because you're so right. You're absolutely right. I know we're going to head this direction in just a minute, but it would be possible because I'm kind of curious about this. Can we talk about that real quick, Nate? Well, I know this, it's kind of off the beaten, beaten path of the tour so is, that we were going to do, but this, I'm so curious. This is the piece of equipment we hide from most people. But <laughs> is it okay? Yeah, absolutely. So we've got this piece of equipment. We have a, a list of customers, and you know these drill holes are inch and a sixty-fourth in diameter, and sometimes bigger than that. And they got big, huge chamfers on them. And our automated piece of equipment, though it is great for running long and has many operations, just not the horsepower that we needed to drill through, but we didn't add, to add a second operation. So the gentleman that runs this cell, they actually take it over here and drill through this. And I swear that this is probably the same piece of equipment that the Waltons used in their TV show. Uh, <laughs> I believe it. <laughs> well, I, thank you for that. I just wanted to make a quick stop. I was just at the American Precision Center in Vermont, and I was looking at all the history of how things were done. I saw that machine. So thank you for indulging me and allowing <laughs> the audience to see that as well. It looks like we're now moving into the welding area. Yeah, so at HDM, we do 90% of our product is manufactured, machined, and fabricated inside this building. Um, Basically, if it's not a seal and it's not a hardware, we fabricate it and build it right inside the plant. You know, that, that helps us control our processes, proves a better product to our end users where we're controlling all of our processes. So we've instituted welding environment with robotics so that we can utilize that Ferris wheel style where the machine on one side is welding, while this side the operator is loading. 
So inside our cell here, we have a Ferris wheel style robot where we have fixturing set up on one side that the operator can load while the welder's welding on the back side and ver vice versa. So it allows us to keep our throughput achieving our on-time delivery. Let's talk about the importance of vertical integrating. You guys have a lot going on here. I mean, you're starting from raw material and you were sending things out the door. You kind of mentioned it earlier, done in one, just on some of the other machines and, and be able to save time. What's the importance of, because you even have paint booths and stuff here, yes, right? Yes, we do. So what's the importance from your side, which I think we've all learned, if we're being honest, we all learned, if we didn't know before, over the last few years, when it was really difficult to get materials and stuff from overseas, a lot of people went to the method of, we're gonna do as much as we can inside. Yeah, that's been our business model since I've started here, is everything controlled inside this environment. It just allows so much more flexibility to customer demand. When you're outsourcing product, you gotta rely on that other cut vendor to turn around and change their schedule to meet your customers flexing demand. Yeah, all right, let's go. I agree with you wholeheartedly. Let's go ahead and head off to the next section. Uh, I know that I want to talk about some things as we move on. When was, what year was HDM started and how was it started? Or how long ago, let's say? Well, I know that I believe we've been here 47 years. Uh, I don't know the exact beginning of HDM. I know it started out as Chapel Industries in downtown Buffalo actually have a gentleman in our lathe department that's been here for 35 years. Wow. And and it started out in high school and, and working part-time in high school and has come up through and is now one of the most influential people in our lathe department. Wow. And, and has been here. His name is uh, Bob Klukla. Great guy. I've worked with him for 20 years. Shout and, out to him. Well done. Yeah, 32 years with the wow. same company. Uh, he's fantastic. And, and that was uh, then transferred over into HDM hydraulics and which we are today and now we're part of the ligon organization which has six sister companies across the united states providing cylinders to north america and beyond so i'm going to pick up that conversation when we start to go on to our next walk but let's talk about the cnc lathe department and what you guys do in this so area in, in our lathe department we have multiple different opportunities here we have a cell that's fed with one fanic robot where one FANUC robot loads two machines. Uh, great sell for us, it does some of our highest volume work. And then we have some other lathes where we have bar feed application with some of uh, the Royal Roto Racks, which are great for automation. Again, simple op uh, automation to keep the green light on, right? That's the key in manufacturing. And then we have a couple hand chucking for our larger diameter parts that we just have can't, can't bar feed. So, We've slid from the beginning, the raw material. We've seen a really cool machine, by the way, uh, older machine. We've gone into some of the welding. We've talked about vertical integration. We're now in the turning center. We're gonna head over to a milling department as well. And as we do, let's go over with the audience what you guys truly make here. Let's dive into some so of we, the parts as we walk. So here, here's one of the things that we make for our customer. These cylinders here is a, cast, a ductile iron casted body that we make for pallet jacks, the power pallet jacks. Wow. So we get those from another company in the United States that casts those for us, and we load and unload these with our robot and machine these parts complete. That's cool. I like seeing, I'm, I'm a big fan of when you say complete, I'm a big fan of seeing that, right? I mean, and you said robots as well. Yep. So it's just, it's, it's just, just making money. I was going to say it. I wanted you to say it. I wanted making to make sure money. we were correct, but it is. It's, it's high volume money, right? parts, right? High volume parts should be running in the background, just making money. And what else do you, I mean, this is a, you mentioned over 100,000 square feet we're walking around. It's warm. I'm sweating a little bit. I'm excited about that as well. If I'm being honest, I'm excited about that. What else do you guys work on? You mentioned sister companies. Is it six, so, you said? Yes, six, six, six sister companies. Sister companies so, all making different variations of hydraulic cylinders for the OEM environment. We've got the crane environment. We've got all agricultural environment. We've got uh, material handling, fork trucks, pallet jacks. Um, we've got uh, egg, uh, skid steers. Uh, we do tailgates. Uh, parties? Tailgate parties? Tailgate parties, that works too. <laughs> uh, it's just a bigger buffet to line. <laughs> and then we, we also are in the paving and, and construction environment, aerial work platforms. Uh, snowplow, we were some of the biggest suppliers of snowplow cylinders in North America. 
Um, we, we are very diversified here and our sister companies into a wide variety of different functions to provide the best quality hydraulic cylinders in the market. Well, you're definitely investing in the best quality machines. I can see that right now and yeah. automation everywhere and you yourself are high quality. Let's step into this area. We talked so, about autom or autom automated welding, but we cannot forget about the trades people. We, we need them like a champ, don't we? Yes, we do. And there are still features that we need experienced welders to help us complete a quality hydraulic cylinder. You know, as great as robotics are, some of the fine-tuned stuff we're doing here, it's just still need that skilled trade to help us complete a quality cylinder for our customers. I agree. Have you heard of the three Ds of automation by chance? Which are now actually, thanks to my friends over at Fanuc have taught me, it's the four Ds, which is dull, dirty, dangerous, and now delicate. And that's what automation's doing for us but we definitely need our creative artists in the welding world to get back to the things that they love. The reason they got into welding to begin with exactly. was to enjoy themselves, right? Well, and, and the other thing I have found that when you watch these guys who are passionate about their skill, they also give you the best input on how to make the automation better. There's nothing better than having the people who are skilled at their trade to help you improve the process. Yeah, I've heard conversations from guys just like you described who were at first nervous when an automated cell came in and then a week into it like, wait, 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 I get to do all the fun stuff again? And I like this robot. Yeah. It's exactly what we're talking about, right? Yep. All right, let's head on to the next section. But before we do, who's that guy on the wall? Well, that would be Josh Allen. Yes, it would be. Are you a fan? Yes, I am. Uh, you have to say it even if you're not on camera, in, in right? Buffalo, in you'll Buffalo, you'll get lynched. <laughs> and we do not want that to happen today. All right, we're going to head over here, which I believe is your, and correct me if I'm wrong, but looks like maybe a milling section. I'm seeing yeah, a lot of a, parts over here. Yeah, we have a milling area, and this is kind of where a lot of things come together for our queuing. Um, so we've got our rods. This is that hole again with that ancient piece of equipment. Is that, that, we, is that what we're that's, making that's on that? That's one of them, oh. yeah. So this is just that hole in that chamfer on that ancient piece of equipment is used every day. Um, and then we've got our milling department. So in our milling department, we have four horizontals um, of various types. And, you know, we have a various different work there we do there. We, we specialize in custom valve integration for our customers. Uh, instead of having to mount on a, a sun valve cavity body or something onto their cylinder, we integrate that, that porting into our cylinders. Then we have four vertical weld or vertical milling centers as well. And then we even threw a lathe in there because as we all know, more and more people are starting to use their lathes as mills. And that's really critical to stay competitive is to push that envelope. You're so right. And there's two things that I want to segue from. The reason I paused right here is because I know you're an entrepreneur. I say am. And you are a really clever entrepreneur, might I add. Would this be one of your parts here? It is. This is. This is actually my base model uh, that we've developed uh, primarily for pallet pool environments. You, uh, you yourself have developed this, right? Yes. In conjunction with HDM, they, you know, they, they paid for my prototypes, right? So the funding has come through HDM, and it's a great partnership, and they've allowed me to you know, pursue this. Uh, but what that's allowed us to do is develop a great product for our pallet pools that will hold clamp pressure indefinitely. I'm so proud of you. That's incredible. I hope, I hope this video and other videos like this help you continue to pursue that. And kudos to HDM for supporting that as well and wanting you to be creative. Yes. And, and they push that. That's, that's the whole way to stay competitive. Oh, it's amazing. All right. The last question of that two piece of why we start, stopped right there is because I want to look at some of these parts over here when we're talking about milling. I think it'd be cool to kind of show the audience some of what you're doing. So here is our, our, our shopping aisle of some of the integration that we do for some of our customers, aerial work platform, the crane industry. Um, this is, we talked in another video about how we were holding a 16 surface finish yes. and hogging off of a material. Here's that part. You know, we're, we're hogging that off at the top of that 500 millimeter pallet, wow. and we're getting that surface finish. And that rigidity is what we talked and, about, right? Being right. able to hold it that high off the part. Yep, and that's the importance of those bases that we were talking about, right? And yes. being able to do that. So these are all the different varieties of milling we do for our customers to provide that unique custom hydraulic cylinder for our event customers. I tell you what, I am, uh, I'm definitely getting my steps in today, Nate. 
and I know that assembly is a little ways away. Do you think we could like rub a genie lamp or make I, a wish? Or how do I, we get there? I think if we rub the camera, we'll just appear. Let's try that. Let's see if we can rub the camera a little bit. Okay, we'll see you in assembly. Well, Nate, we made it over to assembly. I don't, I'm not sure exactly how we got here. It actually worked it when got, we rubbed the camera. I was surprised as you were. Well, well we're but here. It we made it. saved us the steps. Yeah, thank goodness, because I'm a little tired right now. We're getting our steps in. All right, we did make it to assembly. It's obviously around us everywhere. Let's first talk about that before we dive into websites and hiring and everything that goes involved. You know, so we're we're set up to where we can produce over a thousand cylinders a day out of this facility for oh, all gosh. of our customers. So in our records, we've sh shipped out of here almost 1,100 cylinders in a day, and that's through our machining, assembly, paint, package, and through all the, the logistics that go through there. So in this area is where all that gets done. We have six assembly lines in this area where our skilled assembly people put in our seals, assemble, and then we test every single product we ship out the door to ensure for no leaks and proper functionality and meet the customer's requirements. Probably an important area? I would say probably one of our most important areas when it comes to the shop because these are our, you know, some people just say, well, I, am, I only work in assembly. Only work in assembly. And I think that's the wrong tone. I work in assembly. I'm the final gatekeeper, right? I'm the last eyes on an HDM cylinder that it's going to go to the customer. You know, these are our critical people. These are the essential people that, that make the hydraulic cylinder happen. You want to know one of the quickest ways to lose a customer? Bad parts. And these people are the gatekeepers these and they are. are important. So if you are an assembly, just like Nate, sa Nate says, matter. You know you matter. You are the gatekeeper. Nobody wants to get bad parts. No one wants to send bad parts. So thank you for everything you do. I have three main questions as we close this out. I know for a fact you have a kit of Mira machine and a Eurotech machine that you're trying to feed because it's doing so good for you. You're knocking out two, three, four times the work you once were on other machines. So are you looking to bring in more work? And if we so, are absolutely looking for a kind? lot more hydraulic business. If you're looking to have a cylinder made four inch bore down to a half inch bore, HDM is the place for you to go. We have a wide variety of ranges and capabilities that can supply your needs. Yeah, it's a great one. Second one I have out of the three. Are you ready for the next one? Sure am. We know we have a labor shortage. We know there's a lot of people looking for quality places to work. Are you guys hiring? We are definitely hiring. We are looking for some people to come in here and make a career and be partnered with us. We have the environment and we are promoting to get people in here. And you've been here 20 years? 20 years. You mentioned a gentleman 35 years. I've talked to some other folks that are well over a decade or two. This seems like a place where you can spend a lot of time, potentially retire and have a good life. Yes. I, I, I feel part of a group here. You're, we in HDM invests in its employees. And obviously technology and that's a kind, and also air filtration. And we want to work in a place where we can breathe. Yes. All right, last question, and we're done with the tour for everyone watching as well. If I want to learn more, because I got excited about this tour as well, and I want to do my own research, what's your website? How can we find you? HDMHydraulics.com. We're there on the web, and there's links to our other sister companies as well. And if I want to tinker around on social media, I've already found you on LinkedIn, but I imagine you're in other we're, places we're as well. We're on Facebook as well and LinkedIn, yes. All right, this is HDM Hydraulics. I hope you've enjoyed the tour. This is MTD CNC. This is my brother from another Mr. Nate. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you Thank for your you for transparency, your time. allowing us to come in and share what's going on. Get in touch with ADM. If you're looking for that quality partner, someone to work with, they've invested in some really great technology. If you're looking for a great career and you want to live in Buffalo, another wonderful place to work, check them out on their website, and we'll see you again soon. Go Bills.